I have chosen to tell a, a tale from the Ukraine tonight um, in honor of uh, really people all around the world. So uh, this story is called The Mitten. And uh, sometimes it's called The Old Man's Mitten. The version I'm going to tell is by Alvin Treisel. And it comes from a picture book that was published in 1964. And Alvin Treisel adapted a version by Eugenie Rakhev, who was a storyteller and an artist. And he first published versions of the story in 1951. Now, like a good storyteller, I looked up Eugenie Rakhev to find out what I could about this author. And I found a beautiful website where there were eight versions of the story that you could see the covers all by Rakhev. And on the website, there was the most wonderful quote, obviously translated. And uh, I want to start by sharing that quote with you about all of these versions of the mitten. This is the quote, please look and read this very kind folk tale with very kind and fine illustrations, which is possible to enjoy for a very long time. And of course, there's another version of the mitten by Jan Brett, and she collected her version from a friend of hers from the Ukraine. And so I also talked to our friend from Storytellers of Canada, Linda Makralarenko, about the story. So let us begin. Long ago, there was a boy and his grandmother said, go out and gather some firewood for the wind blows hard and we will need a good fire this evening. And there she sat knitting a pair of mittens. And off the boy went, pulling his sleigh behind him and loading it with the sticks. Now you would wonder how this next part happened, but this is the way my grandfather tells it. The boy dropped his mitten. How could he not notice on a cold day? Well, I do not know. But that red mitten lay in the snow. And it wasn't long before a little mouse scurried up to the mitten and looked and said, that looks like just the right size for me. And she scurried into the mitten. It wasn't long after that, that her friend, the frog, came hip-hopping along. And the little mouse said, come and join me. And so that's what the frog did and said, thank you for the shelter. I thought that I would freeze. Pretty soon, an owl swooped down and said, may I join you in the mitten? Now owls made the mouse very, very nervous. And Mouse said, now you must mind your manners and don't wiggle around too much. And that's what it, what, how it was. The next to come was the rabbit who came hip hopping along. And the rabbit cried out, is there room for me? Yes, join us, said the mouse. Pretty soon a little fox burrowed her way into the mitten and the fox with a good deal of trouble snugged right in with them right alongside. Well when the gray wolf joined them the mouse was beginning to think that perhaps she shouldn't have been so generous but what she, could she do? It was so cold out. However, the worst was yet to come. And the big bear walked up to the mitten and the animals cried, no room, no room. We have no room. 
Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And he took a deep breath and he took his nose and he pushed and pushed his way into the mitten. Oh, that poor mitten. The seams creaked and groaned, but still the bear pushed. Now the last one to come along was a teeny, tiny little cricket. Oh, she had little scratchy legs and her joints ached with the cold. And she thought, surely there's room for me in the midden. And she squeezed her way in. And perhaps you can guess what happened. There was a rip and a snap and a pop. And all of the animals were tossed out onto the snow. Now, at that very moment, this is what my grandfather told me. The little boy discovered he had lost his mitten. And so he retraced his steps, but he couldn't find it. Indeed, he found a place where there was lots of red wool. And he could swear that he saw a little mouse who wore a little red cap that looked ever so much like the thumb of his mitten. And the little mouse was scurrying away. Ah, oh, well, said the boy, grandmother will knit me another pair of mittens. Now my grandfather told me, well, he never did really know what happened to his mitten. Now you know for sure. Thank you.